Hi guys, Mrs. Land here today. I have uh, the book, The Call of the Wild, and it's by Jack London. Um, I don't know if you have noticed, but it's at the movie theater. So I believe that they're releasing movies on TV a lot sooner. And so you might be able to get it on TV uh, to actually watch the movie, or maybe you saw it at the movie theater already. But if you haven't heard of this book before, I highly recommend it. I think you're gonna really enjoy it. So sit back and enjoy. The Call of the Wild by Jack London. Chapter one is a kidnapped king. A kidnapped, ki a kidnapped king. Buck did not read the newspapers or he would have known that trouble was ahead. Trouble not just for him, but for every strong dog with warm, long hair along the western coastline. Men had found gold in the Arctic, and these men wanted dogs. The dogs they wanted were heavy dogs with strong muscles to pull dog sleds and with furry coats to protect them from the frost. Buck lived at a big house in the sunny Santa Clara Valley. Judge Miller's place, it was called. It was a large, beautiful home with wraparound porches and a long driveway. And the escape had wide, the estate had wide longs, lawns with great stables, grape arbors, green pastures, orchards, and berry patches. And then there was the big cement tank where Judge Miller's boys took their morning swim and kept cool in the hot afternoon. Buck ruled over this great estate and he was, he was born and he had lived there for four years of his life. There were other dogs, but they did not count. The house dog and the kennel dogs came and went, but Buck was neither house dog nor kennel dog. The whole place was his and he jumped into the swimming tank and he went hunting with the judge's sons. He went with Molly and Alice and judge's daughter on long walks and on wintry nights. He laid at the judge's feet before the roaring library fire. He carried the judge's grandson on his back or rolled them in the grass and played with them in the orchards. Buck was king, king over all the other dogs and every person at the Miller estate. His father, Elmo, had been a huge St. Bernard, the judge's favorite. Buck was not so large. He weighed only 140 pounds, for his mother, Shep, had been a Scottish shepherd dog, and nevertheless, he carried himself like a much larger dog, like the king he was with great pride. I'd like to show you the picture that they have right here at the very beginning. And then they were just talking about this part right here. So that's Buck. This is the very next page. And this was the life Buck led in the fall of 1897 when the Klondike gold dragged men from all over the world into the frozen north. But Buck did not read the newspapers. He did not know that men's hearts could be turned with greed. Manuel, one of the gardener's helpers, was such a man whose heart had turned and his greedy eyes had fallen on Buck, a perfect sled dog. The judge was at a meeting and the boys were at a club on the sad night of Manuel's crime. No one saw him take Buck and lead him through the orchard for an evening stroll. And only one man saw them arrive at a little train station known as College Park. This one man talked with Manuel and handed him money. Are you going to tie him up? The stranger asked gruffly. 
Manuel doubled a piece of stout rope around Buck's neck under the collar. Twist it and you'll choke him plenty, said Manuel. Buck did not resist the rope. He had learned to trust men he knew. But when the ends of the rope were placed in the stranger's hands, he growled to make the man let go. And to his surprise, the rope tightened around his neck, shutting off his breath. Oh no. That's not good. So he was a nice dog and he's probably gonna turn mean right this minute. In a quick rage, he sprang at the man, but the man was ready and he threw Buck onto his back and tightened the rope more. Never in all of his life had Buck been so cruelly treated and never in all of his life had he ever been so angry. But his strength left him and his eyes closed and he fainted from the rope and the pain. And he was not even aware when the train came and when two men threw him into the baggage car. The next thing he knew, he was being jolted along in something moving and his tongue was hurting. The shriek of the train whistle told him where he was. He was kidnapped. He was kidnapped. He was a kidnapped king, now full of anger. And he opened up his eyes, saw a man in the baggage car. The man's hand sprang to pull the rope, but Buck was too quick for him. His jaws closed on the hand, and he held on as even as if he was choked once again. And later in the small saloon, the man complained that of his night's ride. All I get is $50 for this here dog, he grumbled, and I wouldn't do it over for a thousand dollars. He held Buck firmly by the rope. The man's hand was, hand was wrapped up and his pants were ripped from knee to ankle. So there's the picture of the train. How much did the other guy get? The saloon keeper asked. A hundred. Wouldn't take a penny less. Well, that makes a hundred and fifty dollars, the saloon keeper said. And he's worth it, or I don't know dogs. Here, lend me a hand with this brass collar that he's wearing. Dazed and in pain, Buck once more was thrown down and choked. And the two men held him down as they filed his heavy brass collar from off of his neck. And then the rope was removed and he was flung into a cage-like crate. And without his collar, no one would ever know that he was the king of Judge Miller's estate. There he lay for the rest of the night. He could not understand what all it meant. Why did they want him, these strange men? Why were they keeping him now in this narrow crate? Well, several times during the night, he sprang to his feet when the shed door rattled open, expecting to see the judge, or the boys at least. But each time, it was the ugly face of the saloon keeper that looked at him. And each time, his hope turned into a savage growl. And in the morning, four men entered and picked up the crate, evil looking men, and Buck stormed and raged at them through the bars. They only laughed and poked sticks at him as the crate was lifted into the wagon. Then Buck began a long journey on a wagon, a truck, a ferry steamer, and then finally on yet another train, passing through many hands to a place he knew not where. So Buck was kidnapped. Buck was taken from his, his home and he used to be just like this loving, sweet dog. And then these guys just took him. He doesn't know where he's going, but he knows that he's not with his owner anymore. 
that's chapter one.